All right, so for those who can't wait to make things move, here's how you do it. First of all, I'm using Live2D Modeler, Cubism 2.0.01. If you're using the older version or the newer version, it's fine because this is also how you make, make things move, basically, anyways. So first of all, go to um, uh, your texture, edit texture, click it, select file, find the file that you need, press open, and press OK. And then here you see your uh, material that you want to make to move. Um, use this pen tool to select around the object. Press OK. And there you go. You have import, imported the material in. Now you may be wondering how come the parameters are not moving things as, you, as you've seen in other videos because you have to tell the software where at what point in what under what command would it do whatever transformation so let's say for example um, first I want to locate in the middle uh, you can press this blue box here to show up when you hover over the left side of the buttons you press it and you see this box here all right now select the uh, material click on this big box and you see all the parameters available now uh, we are working on angle X and angle Y so at angle X select add three keys so you see at this bar at the scale between negative 30 and 30 there's one point at negative 30 0 and positive 30 press uh, go to angle Y and also do the same thing add three keys and press OK you see green dots now instead of uh, uh, the gray dots, but still nothing is moving your stuff. What you need to do right now, let's say this dot here, you're supposed to locate yourself in the center as the default, right? And you want to move it upwards when you press when you when you shift this uh, red red dot up up there. So select the upper dot, and then tell the material where it's supposed to be when you do that. So now I move the material up there and I click to the center point again. It goes back down and I click the upper point, it goes up and anywhere in between it's going to uh, go to the relative position, the corresponding position. And however, you did the up and down, you still haven't done anything else, all the other ones. So you also have to tell it what it what's it supposed to do when you say go down. Now you say you point to the bottom dots and then you can move this down here here all right do the same thing for left and right to here and right side to here and then now you have the four directions but you still haven't done diagonal now there are two ways to do it you can do them uh, manually individually or you can go to uh, parameters, synthesize corners, and then do the select angle x. It should be angle x angle y by default, but if it isn't, select per perimeter 1 as angle x, perimeter 2 as angle y, press OK. And now you should have your eight directions settled. All right? So this is how you make things move. If you want something more complicated, then go for Deformer because Deformer is also one important tool for making things move. Um, first of all, you select the material that you want to be deformed. And then this is going to be a child object. If you click Create Deformer, you're going to create a parent object that would control all its child's uh, children. So click on Create Deformer, uh, work with the curve surface whatever it's in the rest of the cutoff line and press OK you'll see this um, waffle here and waffle is all you need to know uh, what you do with the waffle is that when you select the waffle you don't see those green dots anymore because waffle are not supposed to work or deformers are not supposed to work with uh, the angle X and angle Y at least not by default if you select back to your child object with the this uh, pointer here you press a pointer and then you press the select uh, select the original object you'll see the green dots however if you select the waffle or deformer 
you don't see that same green dots, meaning that only the child knows how it functions within those angle X and angle Y that you've told it to do. But the parent object, the deformer still doesn't know how to do that. And you shouldn't be duplicating them because it would be kind of pointless. You should be, when a child object is working with some parameters, the parent could work with other ones that is at the um, upper rank of a hierarchy, if that makes sense. For example, you want to have a, uh, let's say, let's say just call it angle Z, all right? Select the uh, parent object. You want to work with angle Z. And whatever angle Z does, it would affect all the child objects. And the child objects would move around or transform around in relative to the parent's object's perimeter. So let's show it real quick. Um, add three keys to the angle Z, press OK. Now you see the green dots here and obviously nothing's moving. If you select the angle X and angle Y, the child object is still performing as it should be, as I was told earlier. Now angle Z, you want to give it a try. Uh, let's say at the lower point, at negative 30, you want it to be in this position, so this area. Originally, you told your child object to move around this area when it go up and down, uh, left and right, right? What happens if you move the parent object here? Would it go back to here to move around or what? It, well, here's how you can test it out. So now, originally, you have the angle Z at the center right here. Child object moves around this area, all right? If you move down here, child object moves around the bottom area. And anywhere in between, the child object would follow and do that, all right? But, however, if you've done it differently, all right? Let's say you don't have this parent object. You have the child object selected, and you say, okay, let's try that angle Z thing, all right? You, Go to with beyond angle X and angle Y, you go to angle Z, you say create three points, and now you go to the bottom point and say, hey, child, uh, well, whatever, material, all right? Now, here's what I'm gonna do. I want you, when I say angle Z at negative 30, I want you to move around this area. So you move it down here when you select angle Z at the bottom one. However, when you move to other points, other of those eight points, the remaining eight points of the, the original uh, angle X and Y, it go back to its upper zone. But if you select the, the central one, then you go, let's go back to the lower zone. Which means that you've only defined when angle X and Y equals to 0, 0, and angle Z equals to negative 30, it will be at this location. Which means that you need to do all those 9 of them, or yeah, all, all the remaining 8 of them. Also, you need to you know, tell them where to go individually in order for them to relatively uh, function as they should, which is kind of hassle, right? And not that's not even the worst, all right? If you move back, let's say I want now I want this um, the upper part. When I say angle Z go to positive thirty, I want it to be at this area, upper the upper zone. Now you have to do that all over again. The eight points, you have to do them individually and tell them when when angle Z is positive 30, where in those nine points of X and Y they should be individually. So that is a major uh, increase in workload. And that's what is what is what are deformers for. So use them wisely. Try not to have any any time, no matter it's a material drawing object, or a uh, deformer, do not have more than two par parameters in control or your workload will increase exponentially. I promise you that. So use them wisely. And if you follow my course, you will know some tips and tricks and general rules how to, how to have uh, the deformers and the original objects with the workload. Uh, for general speaking, um, when, it's, when it comes to moving around positions, you call I call it transforming, right? Uh, you want to have that. Uh, you want to have the deformer to handle that. But if it's sort of like changing shape or size, 
then you can have your individual object uh, do that on its own. But we'll talk more about that later on. That is for that, that is all I have to tell you if you want to know how to make things move, how to scale things, you should you will figure it out. Alright? So you can start immediately, uh, go nuts with Lie 2D if you think you can handle it. But you know, if you want to sit around and learn more about it, because I'm pretty sure that within five minutes after this video, you will have trouble doing anything at all. So let's get into the real uh, beginner's course, all right? Let's talk about theories, right? 